Hi everyone, this is the second of the videos dealing with testing for associations. In this video I am going to talk about the chi-square statistic and how to show relationships between variables in scatter diagrams. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the chi-square statistic. So this examines the relationship between two non-metric variables. So it's very similar to a cross tab, however in a chi-square statistic the, you, you can test for associations between those variables. So do the same proportion of males and females make up the categories of distance um, driven to Delhi Depot is a kind of question that can be answered with the chi-square. So in the example I'm going to show you, I'm going to look at the relationship between gender and market area in our Delhi Depot data. So the procedure is shown here on the right. Um, I have, we'll go to SPSS and the procedure for a chi-square is very similar to a cross tab but there are some key differences here. So we need to go to analyze, descriptive statistics and cross tabs. We need to select our first variable, in this case market area, it doesn't matter which way around we put them but market area I'm going to put in row and gender I'm going to put in columns. So the next two things are slightly different depending on whether you're using SPSS or PSPP. In, SPS, in both you can click the statistics and in SPSS you need to select chi-square. So I'm selecting my chi-square. If you're using PSPP it will already be selected and you do nothing except say continue. How, and then you need to collect, uh, collect, select cells. So in SPSS, I like using the observed and expected counts or expected frequencies to in my um, output. If you're using PSPP, you'll need to unselect the percentages of row, column and total and you'll need to select observed and expe um, expected and hit continue and then OK. So this is what the output looks like but I'm going to talk about it in my slides because it's easier to display. So in terms of the analysis, so the first thing we need to do is check the assumptions footnote which is footnote A down the bottom of our output. So in this case our footnote says that zero cells or zero percent have expected count less than five. The minimum count expected count is 12.8. So what this means is that we need to have a certain number of observations per cell in order for the chi-square to work. And if you have too many cells that have lower than expected counts, the chi-square will not work, and you can you then you need to do a a plain old cross tab because you don't have enough data. So in this case, zero cells have, let, have a count less than five, which is zero is much less than 20%, so we are fine. If it is more than 20%, then the chi-square may not be valid, depending on how far above 20% you are. So the second thing we need to do is check the Pearson chi-square and asymptotic significance, two-sided. Yes, say that three times quickly. So, because our significance of 0 0.000 is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis and say that there is a significant difference between the number of males and females and the distance they travel to Delhi Depot. So in order to figure out in what direction this difference is occurring, we then look at our counts versus expected counts in the cross tabulation table. So as we can see, if you look at females who came from one mile, the expected count is 52.8, but the actual count is 36, which is actually much lower than expected. 
Then we look at came from 1 to 5 miles, the count was 56, the expected count was 48. So in this case we have more people coming from 1 to 5 miles than expected. And then from more than 5 miles we have 28 as their actual count and our expected count was only 19. So again we have more people coming from further than, more females coming further than expected. On the flip, if we compare that to males, camp coming from within one mile, our count is 52, our expected count was 35. So males are more likely to come from within one mile than expected. From one to five miles, 24 is the count, the expected count was 32. So there is less people coming from one to five miles than expected. And the same thing happens with more than five miles. There are less males coming from more than five miles than expected. So in terms of the analysis, the interpretation is that the females are significantly more likely to travel further to Delhi Depot than males. So what we can say is that females are possibly more dedicated to Delhi Depot than males are who are only willing to go a shorter distance to go to a Delhi Depot store. So the second uh, thing I'm going to show you in this particular video is the scattered diagram that shows visually the relationship between variables. So we need to do a scatter plot where we look at the covariation is the amount of change in one variable as it shown consistently that is consistently related to the change in, in another variable. So we can use this for data generated using interval or ratio scales, but you cannot use it for categorical data, nominal or ordinal scales. So on the right you have your procedure. There are different procedures depending on what you want to do. The um, textbook uses one procedure whereas I prefer to use a different one. I'm going to show you my preferred one. If you'd like, you can use the textbook procedure um, and you can follow their instructions. So do a scatter plot. We go to graphs, something builder, something different. And we go to chart builder. Um, OK, we've already defined our variable properties, so we don't need to do that. So down the bottom you have a thing called gallery and here you see scatter. So I select scatter from the list of options and it doesn't really matter which one you select. Um, I'm going to choose the, so you can do a simple scatter. I'm going to use the simple scatter with fit line because the scatter plot is not necessarily the easiest thing to read. So I'm going to select my first variable, which is variable x8, recommend to a friend, and I drag that to the y-axis. And as you can see, it now says recommend to friend on my y-axis. I then select my second variable, which is going to be x9, which is satisfaction level, and I click and drag that to the x-axis. You can add title, a title and footnotes to the scatter plot if you'd like, but I'm not. I'm just going to select OK. So here we have our scatter plot diagram. As you can see, it's quite this, the basic one is uh, quite difficult to read. There are other ways to display this diagram. If you right click on it, you can edit the content of this scatter plot to make it more legible, change the colors, those sorts of things. But in our analysis, you can also see that it includes what's called the R square. Linear equals 0.361. So this is actually a correlation statistic that shows the how much explanatory power the the, or the co-variation between satisfaction level and recommend to a friend. How much variation between the two variables is explained by the other. So 
here we have again the two different types of scatter plots and I've also included a link here that is a fun game of how guessing the correlation statistic that is up there based on a sample of scatter plots. So to give you a, a taste of what this looks like and how difficult it is, we start a new game. So it shows you a scatter plot and these are all positively related. So I think this is 0.65 and the actual relationship was 0.72. So I got it wrong. I'm not too bad. I don't know. Mean error 0 0.07. This one I think is quite high, so I'm going to say 0 0.8. Uh, I'm well outside of acceptable parameters. So that's a you can sit there and play guess the correlation with that game. Uh, yes, it's a very geeky thing to do, but I'm a geek. Alright, so in terms of our scatter plot, we can see here that we have a positive relationship between the variables. We don't have a strong relationship because we seem to have quite a lot of distance between the variables as they are, or our observations as they are scattered around the line, but they do appear to be linear in their, um, in their patterning. So that is a correlation, rela uh, looking at correlations. So in the next, in the next lots of videos, I'm going to talk about the different correlations or what correlation is and the different methods that we have for um, testing correlations.